So this, this next area of work I'm finding quite exciting and novel for our little niche of the industry um, because as engineers and applied scientists we were always taught to report not just a measurement but also its uncertainty and um, uh, when we historically have developed and applied the representative meteorological year data sets what we're describing there is an expectation of what typical climate looks like uh, and not really providing any real insights into how performance of, of a building or an asset might vary over time as we see uh, different, um, I want to say different climates, uh, variations on the existing climate for that location. So. Um, uh, we would like to understand how a building performs in Melbourne in a hot year or a cold year or a wet year or a dry year. Uh, and we just don't get those kinds of insights from the representative average. Um, so to this end, we're looking to develop data sets which characterise not just the expectation or typical climate, um, but also the expected variance in, uh, as I said, dry or wet years or hot or cold. Um, financiers love this stuff and they really uh, rely on it to a great extent uh, in other parts of the energy system. So developers of uh, renewable energy infrastructure, generation infrastructure, uh, need to demonstrate a rigorous understanding of the sorts of variances that they're like to, likely to see year on year and that then presents the financial risk that's inherent in the design that they're proposing. Um, so that, uh, this sort of thing has been well, well studied in the development of major infrastructure like solar or wind farms, but we, as an industry, we haven't uh, come to any agreement on what extremes mean uh, for uh, the built environment, for, for buildings. Um, so at Exemplary, we've been doing this sort of work uh, looking at PV performance and we actually produce a data set which characterises the climate of a, of a 1st, a 10th, a 90th and 99th percentile year of performance for a PV system. Uh, and we do this using a, a range of, a suite of tools including the system advisor model, um, our in-house uh, climate analysis or weather, weather data analysis tool uh, and some other modelling tools. We'd also like to do this for building HVAC. The problem turns out to be a lot more complex in HVAC than for PV, uh, because for a start, uh, PV is closely correlated with a single weather element, solar irradiation, and PV systems generally perform very similar, similarly, whether they're a small rooftop system or a major solar farm. Um, as you can imagine, buildings and HVAC systems are a lot more diverse some are um, smaller footprint buildings with a lot of glazing, for example, might be highly sensitive to variations in horizontal irradiance. Uh, depending on the HVAC system, some, some systems are more or less sensitive to humidity uh, or to dry bulb temperature. Um, so, so far we agree that an understanding of extremes is important and we have this uh, extreme meteorological year uh, data set that's been developed for PV. So we've looked at the validity of applying those data sets to buildings uh, and the results are presented here. So we've, we've ranked the annual HVAC energy um, in history for, uh, I think this is averaged across our three building archetypes, from smallest to largest. Uh, and the hypothetical year XMYs uh, are highlighted with uh, coloured bars. So these are the PV XMYs and we see way down at the low end, uh, the 90th percentile um, is a, a very low energy use year, the first percentile is somewhere in the middle and the 10th percentile is uh, a high energy consumption year for these buildings. Uh, so what, what we can conclude uh, at the end of all that is that um, the extreme meteorological year data sets that we've uh, developed for applications in solar PV modelling are really completely invalid when we attempt uh, to use them on buildings. Uh, so that, uh, that brings us to a, 
a wide open question as to how to develop these XMY data sets for buildings. Um, we're, we're working on a new technique which we've implemented in a couple of locations where we run the, the full 30 odd year of weather history for the location uh, through our building archetypes uh, modelled in Energy Plus to generate the monthly heating and cooling data uh, over that entire period of history. Um, we, can, we can then uh, do a few things. Firstly, uh, assess whether the extreme year for one building is valid across at least these three archetypes. Uh, we've already seen that um, an extreme year for PV doesn't appear to be an extreme year for, uh, for building energy, uh, but we hope to find that there's some correlation uh, between, um, between different building types, and I'll show you on the next slide how that looks. Um, and then develop a range of descriptive statistics um, and confirm that uh, the data does fit a Gaussian distribution, which, to get a bit statistically technical for a moment, uh, means that we can apply standard statistical techniques uh, to interrogate the results. So our first question was, uh, can one def definition of extreme apply to a range of different buildings? Uh, and the, this figure here shows um, the, the annual energy consumption uh, for each of our three different building archetypes. And we can see there that th things are a little fuzzy, but there appears to at least be some correlation between, between the three. Uh, and that gave us some heart uh, because it means it is roughly feasible, or it is feasible, to produce uh, an XMY, an extreme data set, which is reasonably meaningful across the, a, a broad uh, um, industry of, or a, a broad sector of commercial buildings. Uh, and thankfully, these results do so show some reasonable correlation. I won't take you through all of the statistics. Um, uh, but here we've simulated the building archetypes using annual weather, weather data, and on this side we're showing a scatter plot of annual energy from two different archetypes. Um, if a single year is an outlier across all archetypes, then that's, that again is a further indication that one year of extreme weather affects all, uh, and that is that we're looking for uh, correlations in the results. Now, in this chart here, Looking at an total annual HVAC, uh, the correlation doesn't appear very strong. But if we break this down to um, just looking at the, the heating energy or the cooling energy, uh, which I'll slow on the show on the next slide, we'll see that the correlation is greatly improved. Uh, and so what this tells us is that uh, while it might not apply for the entire year, an extreme cooling season, or in this case here, an extreme heating season, is extreme for both of the two archetypes being shown. Uh, not only at the very extremes, but we could pick a season at the 10th, 75th or 95th percentile, and the correlation indicates that broadly the same weather uh, will put us somewhere in the vicinity of the 10th, 75th or 90th percent, 95th percentile of heating energy demand for both building types. Um, so, as you'd expect, the mid-rise and high-rise are even more closely correlated than, I'll jump back for a moment, than that uh, three-storey, uh, uh, sorry, supermarket and ten-storey building. Um, so, in conclusion, at this point, we can, uh, det we've determined that extreme meteorological years uh, are viable and feasible uh, for most commercial building types, or at least those represented uh, by our archetypes. So while our early work is showing significant correlations, um, here's a small cor corolla corollary that uh, arose when we were looking through the results. Uh, and this is looking at the trends over time uh, for heating and cooling uh, in one location in Australia, in, in Canberra. Uh, and this is averaged across the three building types. What we're seeing here is really a very, very significant increase in the cooling load and a decrease in the heating load over time, which we attribute to a warming climate. Um, 
now the fact that the climate is warming, warming I don't think is contentious. What really jumped out here is that in the last 30 years, we've seen roughly a 25% increase in the cooling load that would be demanded by the same building between 1990 and the present. And I think that's, uh, that's extraordinary and I think that's something we should be talking about more, but it's not the key uh, of today's presentation, so I'll, I'll move on. Um, back to our analysis. Uh, and again, here we've ranked the annual HVAC energy for each year in history from smallest to largest. Uh, and assuming a Gaussian distribution, which we've demonstrated separately but not shown here, uh, we calculate the HVAC energy that we would expect at a probability at the 1st, 10th, 90th and 99th percentile. Uh, and they're the coloured uh, bars that you see here on this diagram. Uh, and what we see is that we could select, uh, theoretically, we could uh, select the closest historical year to uh, each of those ideals to approximate the, um, the ideal uh, percentile value that we're seeking. Even better would be uh, to operate in the similar way to what we do when we're producing the representative meteorological year data, and that's to select a series of 12 historical months uh, that produce a degree of extremity that uh, when concatenated results in total energy use of something that's very, very close to the ideal values. So the, the numbers I've listed down the right here it, um, are an indication that uh, if we're targeting the 99th percentile, the closest year in history is uh, 1996 and that gives us the 98.8th percentile and that's not too bad. Um, the 10th percentile, the closest we can get is the 12.7th percentile if you like, in 2015. Uh, and that's a little bit further off than we'd like to be. So we're working on the statistical methods to enable that concatenation process uh, and get us very close to uh, the ideal results. Um, we expect to be able to offer an XMY data set for a number of key locations across Australia based on that technique in the coming months. Uh, even better would be to generalise the method using multivariate statistical correlations to understand the statistical relationship between the weather elements and the extremities of en energy demand, uh, which would avoid that step of needing to run a multi-year simulation for the specific location, and that would then enable us to provide an XMY data set for, for any application uh, for any of the 250 locations we're tracking in Australia. Um, uh, at the outset, uh, it's a bit of a manual process, and so uh, we expect to, we'll, we'll start with uh, the key capital cities and move on from there uh, to provide coverage of the eight National Construction Code climate zones uh, and any other key climates that are of interest to our users. Uh, now that brings us to the end of the extreme meteorological year discussion. Uh, any questions or clarifications or...? So a general yeah. question. Um, how would you um, generally um, get HVAC data when it's not easily known, from sensors or the HVAC system itself? How would you isolate the HVAC flow for analysis? Uh, look, that's a really good question. There are... Um, Technique. So for our purposes, we're working with theoretical buildings and theoretical HVAC systems in the application that I described earlier. If you are looking at a calibrated, construct, uh, a calibrated simulation model, then of course the, the ideal is to simply isolate the HVAC system and meter it independently. And really, if you're going to the effort of um, calibrated simulation, you know, that's, that's a process that's going to cost tens of thousands of dollars, yeah. sticking in a metre is absolutely yeah, worthwhile. The mid-tier? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, look, that's it's a really good question. It's not actually, it's not my area of expertise. There are probably um, some statistical techniques. It, it'd be an interesting study to work out, I mean, the, the HVAC performance is almost entirely dependent, assuming occupancy is consistent, 
uh, and your internal loads are consistent, uh, it's entirely dependent on the weather. Uh, and so it would, I think it would be feasible to actually uh, look at the uh, multivariate relationship between key weather elements, yeah. and you might just pick temperature and humidity for most building types, uh, and, and try and work out, uh, there's a statistical technique called um, principal component analysis, uh, oh sorry, independent component analysis. Yeah. And that will extract out, it'll give you a baseline of what's consistent, and then what's varying. Yeah. Uh, and it's that what's varying that you're really interested in. Yeah. Look, one, one thought there is uh, it's that sort of area where benchmarking can be really, really valuable. And maybe not benchmarking against uh, a hypothetical model, but actually benchmarking against other schools or similar buildings yeah. in the local area. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, look, <laughs> even simpler is, um, depending on the HVAC system, making a very blasé assumption about the COP. Uh, you know, this HVAC has a heating COP of 3.5 and a cooling of 2.5. Uh, and um, taking the overall, you know, there, there will be, again, according to benchmarking, you can probably make some reasonable estimates of how much of the load is in plug loads and lighting. Uh, and then what's left over is, is largely HVAC. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs>